Hi YouTube, it's AC Don here again and today we're going to do some machining and in particular I need a new chuck key. This is the chuck key that uh, I use with my three jaw chuck on the lathe. Um, there's nothing wrong with this one and I'm going to uh, copy this for a pattern um, but basically this is a square drive and I need a hexagon drive for the uh, four jaw which I've acquired to go with my lathe. So instead of uh, uh, using an Allen key uh, I'll get round to making an actual, uh, a nice matching chuck key to go with the uh, the set on the machine. So planning this job out, I've uh, selected to use some EN16T steel, which is uh, basically, uh, for the Americans out there, it's very similar to 4037. Um, in the UK, EN16T, or its proper terminology is 605M36. Um, basically, it's a... Um, 0.36% carbon steel and it will harden nicely because the uh, the original chuck key has got a hardened square drive on the end so uh, that bit's been flame hardened so uh, the square the drive that we put on the end of ours which is going to be hexagon we will replicate the flame hardening so at least the uh, chuck key uh, lives as long uh, as it needs to and it won't wear that's the idea there's no point in making a tool if it's not correct hardness so it works properly uh, this steel is also the same steel that uh, A-plus classic mini crankshafts are made from. So, uh, you know, it is good stuff. It's not the same as EN24, but uh, this is uh, for a, a medium carbon uh, low alloy steel. Uh, this will take to the uh, flame hardening much better uh, than EN24 would. So, um, uh, and also the, the, the bar is in half hard condition condition already so that's what the uh, t stands for t condition uh, basically means it's already around 28 to 30 rockwell uh, rockwell c that is um, and hopefully we'll we'll be taking the uh, square drive up to around 50 so uh, we will end up with a nice hard working wear resistant tool in terms of planning i've got no drawing i'm just going to go off the uh, the original uh, key so uh, let's get over to the lathe and let's get machining first of all I'll face and centre the end. No particular feed for this, I'm just hand feeding. Go a little faster to get a better finish. Tend to drill the end. For this, I'm using a BS BS3 tender drill. Run about 1100 RPM for drilling. Obviously make sure the uh, centre drill stays clear and that there's plenty of uh, lubricant. Just move the uh, tailstock out of the way, clean the end of the work and we'll change the uh, chuck for a centre and then we'll pull out the stock and set it up with the center in the end so we can start machining the outside diameter. So how much do we need out? Well, let's just use the chuck key we're copying. So we need about, ooh, yeah, that's probably perfect. Okay, so roughly marking out my uh, workpiece, I need to machine here in the first cut. So I shall take that down to a diameter. And in this case, that diameter is 
about 19.8 so actually i shall just go 20 millimeters um there's no particular need to use a micrometer because this this tool requires very minimal accuracy so uh, a vernier is ideal for measurements in terms of speed uh, i'm going to run this at uh, 125 meters per minute and i'm going to use a feed of uh, 0.2 millimeters per rev so having a quick look at our tool we can see that that is going to hit the center so we're going to have to use a different tool or do what i sometimes do and that's just change the angle so we're going to change the angle and then cut an angle on our work and it will look slightly nicer anyway um, instead of having instead of having these nasty sharp corners we'll we'll put an angle on there and that's the whole point about making things like this is you kind of make it up as you go along so uh, there's no real hard and fast rules here the main thing is you make a nice job how you go about it is really up to you so i can go right down there and that's now we're going to have to readjust our stop yep right set our speed just under 1600 rpm on this diameter so let's set that up on the machine so we touch off so i'm just going to take a uh, two mil cut or actually one mil cut that's two millimeters off the diameter and see how the machine responds this is a harder material so i just need to make sure i don't uh, overload the machine yeah that's a bit hard for the machine so we're running at about 115 percent on the motor so on the next pass, we'll reduce that cut slightly. So we'll take that down, we'll take half a mil off that now. So we'll take uh, 1.5 mil off that. That's happy, she's running just about 100% now. So that's full load. Chipping nicely. Ideal. So, and then this, this cut will be the last cut. That takes that down to 20 mil or around 20 mil So not particularly interested in how accurate this is or how nice it is. It doesn't need to be particularly accurate. So we got 20 mil there and a little bit bigger there, but we're going to turn this down again anyway to the next size. So the next size actually needs to be um, sized so that when I'm here, when I cut the hexagon on the end of here, um, we get the nice flats on the corners. So um, I'll just work that out. So I'm going to machine the next diameter down to 14.35. Taking our new size, we need to go a lot faster. 
So with this chuck on, I'm not going to go the full speed, so I'm going to go up to about 1800 RPM, and then we'll machine the next diameter. And again, we need to set our new stop. So, about there. So let's do that now. Right. chip break in there so I just need to keep an eye on it so I'm taking smaller cuts now Let's check our size A small adjustment to the DRO. Also going to put a small chamfer on that end. There we go. Okay, now the other thing I'm going to do, I think, is I'm just going to just clean this section of bar just to make it look pretty. Um, there's no real reason other than to make it nice. Just going to turn that around, touch on, take a light cut just to clean it up. As, to, as regards how far, well, it's just long enough that it clears the and matches the original tool. So let's just do it to about there. Excellent. I'll say this is only going to be a light cut, so. I expect in a bit of bird's nesting. Oh, surprise, surprise, it's chipping. There we go. Nice clean. There we go. So what I now need to do is to part that. Uh, and then that's ready for uh, the milling operation. Okay, so we're all set up, everything's nice and tight. Now the idea is I'm going to part this off, but I'm not going to part it all the way through. I'm going to part it down to the near the bottom, um, and then I'm just going to finish the last little bit off with a hacksaw. That way it doesn't fly off everywhere. Um, it's just much more sensible to do that.
So, wasn't quite the perfect feed there. That was 0.058 millimeters per rev, but I'm down to a spigot, so I can cut that off easy now, um, and then face the end and chamfer, and then we're we're ready to uh, go onto the mill. So we get that out of the way, hacksaw, and then just take that little bit off. There we go. Now we can uh, face off that end, chamfer it, and then it's ready for the milling operation. Okay, so that's it for part one of the chuck key build. Um, if you want to see more, then please like, subscribe and share. And also, you might want to see the next one because things don't go as planned. See you soon.